What do you really know about Vin Diesel? We all know he's the star of the Fast and Furious movies, not to mention the voice of Groot, but there's still so much about the performer that isn't common knowledge. Here are some little-known facts about Vin Diesel. Diesel's love for the craft of acting was instilled in him at a young age. At the tender age of seven, Diesel, born Mark Sinclair, debuted as a performer in a stage play called Dinosaur Door. His original intentions, however, were somewhat different. According to a CNN profile, he and his brother broke into theater for the new city in Manhattan's East Village, hoping to wreck it in an act of rebellion. These plans were quickly foiled once they were caught by the venue's artistic director, Crystal Field, who gave them a chance to appear in the play. They gladly accepted, and Diesel's first acting gig was locked down. Little did Diesel know that day that this was the first step in an acting career that would span decades and multiple billion-dollar worldwide hits. Iconic performers can come from anywhere, including vandals turned inadvertent actors in productions of Dinosaur Door. Vin Diesel is nowadays known as the face of the Fast and Furious franchise, as well as the voice of Groot in a series of Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. But when he first engaged in the art of cinema, Vin Diesel wasn't just acting in smaller-scale fare, he was also working as a director. Though he hasn't stepped behind the camera in more than a decade, Diesel's first notable project was the 1995 short film Multifacial. I I'm not really into doing soaps, I'll be honest with you. It's not my idea of really acting. You know what I mean? You gotta make a living. Diesel also starred, penned the screenplay, and composed the score, reflecting the intense passion he had for this endeavor. The 27-minute film was submitted to the Cannes Film Festival, where it garnered strong acclaim. It also paved the way for Diesel to direct the 1997 feature-length movie Strays. Though his first few projects showed that Diesel wanted to be a director, his career would end up focusing almost exclusively on being a leading man in movies that would be a far cry from his more grounded indie endeavors. While that career change has resulted in a number of memorable characters, it's also a far cry from the more challenging, intimate dramas Diesel helmed early on. While The Fast and the Furious was the movie that propelled Diesel to the A-list, a year prior to that car-oriented action movie, Diesel scored his actual start as a leading man. That beginning came with Pitch Black, a low-budget sci-fi movie that served as the debut for Diesel's famous character, Riddick. This production wasn't meant to be the start of a major leading man's career. It was initially just another sci-fi horror film trying to squeeze a few dollars out of moviegoers in between bigger blockbusters in February. However, you never know what's going to resonate with people, and Pitch Black ended up being more successful than expected with a $53.1 million worldwide total. In the process, mainstream audiences got their first extensive glimpse at Diesel, who firmly established his commanding screen persona with his work here. Diesel would go on to star in bigger movies as soon as one year later with The Fast and the Furious, but despite the success of that horror-filled feature, Pitch Black was the motion picture that secured Diesel's leading man status. Some actors live for the spotlight, while others will do anything to shy away from it when they're not filming a project. Vin Diesel is decidedly in the latter camp. Despite headlining major Hollywood movies for over two decades, Diesel isn't a staple of the tabloids, and much of his personal life remains a mystery. Diesel has made it apparent in interviews that this is very much a conscious choice. In 2006, after being asked about his romantic relationships, Diesel told Details magazine, I'm not going to put it out there on a magazine cover like some other actors. I come from the Harrison Ford, Marlon Brando, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino code of silence. He would then go on to note that he prefers exploring romantic relationships in Europe because he's a little more incognito there. Since that interview, Diesel has remained true to his words, although those following his social media feeds, like his Instagram, get occasional glimpses into his personal world, Diesel has largely stayed out of the limelight unless he's talking about his artistic pursuits. The continued aura of mystery surrounding Diesel is a testament to how he's maintained that code of silence about his personal life for so long. What does Vin Diesel do when he's not starring in movies? Chances are he's playing Dungeons & Dragons. This tabletop game is a favorite for the actor, and it's influenced a number of the movies he's appeared in. In particular, The Chronicles of Riddick is one of the biggest reflections of Diesel's affinity for D&D. With this sequel, the world of Pitch Black was expanded to include dense lore that was largely inspired by D&D. This creative influence wasn't limited to what happened on screen, it even impacted what the actors did on the set, Diesel told Underground Online. I was literally playing Dungeons & Dragons with Judi Dench and Carl Urban at nights after shooting Chronicles of Riddick. I will tell you that I was showing her Dungeons & Dragons books and showing her the different properties of elementals. 
Diesel's love for this game would go on to be a massive source of inspiration for his 2015 film The Last Witch Hunter, to the point that the movie's protagonist is just a slightly tweaked version of Diesel's own D&D character. And that's all before getting into how Diesel penned the introduction to the book 30 Years of Adventure, a celebration of Dungeons & Dragons. In the mid-2000s, Diesel decided to get in on the ground floor of the booming video game industry by starting up his own production company dedicated to making games. The label was called Tygon Studios and represented an attempt by Diesel to both have more control of the products he was associated with and to get in on a rapidly expanding market. Tygon Studios head Ian Stevens told GameIndustry.biz, "...it really is just about a guy who loves games wanting to find a way for Hollywood and the games industry to find more interesting ways to work together than they typically do." Stevens also noted that Diesel has had a long-standing love for the video game industry. In the years since its launch, Tygon Studios hasn't always lived up to its potential, with some of its biggest initial titles like Wheelman failing to really take off. However, that doesn't mean Tygon has totally flamed out. In fact, in spite of all the ways the video game industry has changed in the last 15 years, Tygon Studios is still in existence and was credited as one of the developers on the 2020 video game Fast and Furious Crossroads. In the fall of 2020, Vin Diesel began pursuing a new avenue for artistic expression. Having already done films and video games and even showing up to croon tunes at special events, Diesel was now becoming a singer. Apparently, a response to the restrictions imposed on him by COVID-19, Diesel had found a new outlet for creative expression that didn't entail gathering up countless cast and crew members for a film shoot. His debut single was entitled Feel Like I Do and was followed up by the tune Days Are Gone. Diesel premiered his songs on The Kelly Clarkson Show, where they garnered lots of attention but generated a mixed response from the internet at large. Still, even if they weren't universally beloved, Diesel's songs have a special place in his heart. Diesel explained to Clarkson, "...I am blessed that in a year that I would normally be on a movie set, and as you know, that's not possible, I've had another creative outlet, another way to show you or share with you my heart." Though Diesel hasn't officially announced how extensively he'll pursue singing in the future, the obviously personal place these tunes are coming from makes it a sure bet we haven't seen the last of Vin Diesel the singer. Everyone's aware that Diesel can drive a car really fast, but did you know that Diesel is also a skilled breakdancer? It's a gift that Diesel employed in his earliest days as an artist in New York City, where he would perform on the streets in between shifts as a bouncer. Though Diesel has clearly moved on to much bigger things than having to dance for cash, videos of Diesel's breakdancing moves are still around online and give a glimpse into his talents in this form. Diesel himself has been reminded of this part of his career several times throughout the years, including in a 2014 appearance on Live with Kelly and Michael, much to Diesel's amusing discomfort. In that appearance, Diesel commented, "...this was back in the 80s. Yeah, I used to breakdance at, at, at Columbus Circle, I used to breakdance at Washington Square Park, it was my first gig." The way Diesel described this experience makes it clear that, though we shouldn't expect to see breakdancing as a plot point in any future Fast and Furious movies, he still looks back on this part of his life with some degree of fondness. The role of Pug in the Ben Affleck action movie Reindeer Games is not a significant role, but it is one Vin Diesel was originally slated to play. Yet anyone who's seen the final cut of that film knows that Pug was played by Donald Logue. How did the character go from being portrayed by Diesel to Logue? Danny Trejo revealed in a 2010 interview with the AV Club that he helped convince Diesel to walk away from the film and star in The Fast and the Furious instead. Diesel expanded on this matter in 2015 when he revealed to Uproxx that a primary reason for him ditching the film was creative disputes with director John Frankenheimer. In the process, he didn't just miss out on the role, he also lost a $500,000 payday. But by walking away from the film entirely, Diesel gave himself the opportunity to headline the career-changing The Fast and the Furious. We've all gotta start somewhere. That's even true for Vin Diesel, whose movies have amassed a combined $11.1 billion worldwide. Even a performer of this caliber didn't begin his acting career firing on all cylinders. In fact, his very first job opportunity when he arrived in Los Angeles wasn't an acting gig at all, but rather a job in the world of telemarketing," Diesel told the New York Times. "...well, the first time I went to Hollywood, I couldn't even get an agent. I got to LA and I auditioned a bunch, but I couldn't get an agent. I ended up telemarketing, selling tools over the phone." Clearly, Diesel left that life behind once he got the chance to direct and star in movies. However, his skills at selling people things did end up having some level of influence over his life, as it laid the groundwork for how Diesel has become a one-man hype machine on social media for his various artistic pursuits. 
That's the kind of confident salesman attitude you can only glean from extensive telemarketing experience. For a while, Inhumans was a part of the Phase 3 slate for the Marvel Cinematic Universe, with the project first set for a November 2018 release before moving to July 2019. In the earliest days of this production's existence, rumors spread like wildfire that Vin Diesel was on tap to play the lead of the film, Black Bolt. Diesel later confirmed these rumors, though he noted that, even with his existing connections with Marvel through playing the character Groot, Diesel was only looking to play Black Bolt if the Inhumans movie looked appealing. Diesel explained to MTV, "...it's not a matter of me wooing Marvel, it's a matter of Marvel wooing me. And I love them, but I'm just saying, show me a dope script and show me a great director, all of which I know that Kevin Feige is capable of." That process of wooing was cut short when Marvel Studios took the Inhumans movie off their release schedule and Marvel Television announced plans to do a separate Inhumans TV show. This seemed to be the end of the Inhumans movie and the prospect of seeing Diesel as Black Bolt. Even with the film shelved, Diesel continued to openly campaign for Marvel to do an Inhumans movie as late as January 2020. For the moment, though, the Inhumans movie and Diesel's chance to take on a second Marvel Cinematic Universe role have been put on a shelf. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite action stars are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.